You're listening to the Australian Water Association podcast series. My name is Peter Dredge and joining me is Philip Joyce. Philip is a technical director at GHD and leader of their waterways and stormwater team in Victoria. Welcome, Philip. Thank you. Phil, you've been involved in the development of a drainage and flood strategy for the Fisherman's Bend Urban Renewal Area in Melbourne. Tell me a little bit about Fisherman's Bend. Fisherman's Bend is um, is located next to uh, Melbourne CBD, um, just to the southwest um, between the Yarra River and Port Phillip Bay. And Fisherman's Bend is the uh, is the largest um, uh, urban renewal area in Australia at approximately. Uh, 480 hectares. Um, it's more than twice the size of Melbourne CBD, um, and it's uh, it expects to be home to um, 80,000 residents and uh, 80,000 jobs by by 2050. Tell me about the challenges that Fisherman's Bend faces in uh, in terms of flooding. <laughs> yeah, there's um there's a, a lot of challenges for. Uh, uh, Fisherman's Bend. In terms of, uh, of flooding, um, it's it's at risk uh, from flooding from uh, tide levels, coastal flooding. Um, also, with the River Yarra uh, flowing adjacent to it, there's flooding from there as well. And then there's also um, risk of stormwater flooding, um, so direct rainfall on the site itself, and also some of the adjacent uh, catchments. So flooding from from all angles. It's also um, a low-lying area which uh, makes it particularly vulnerable to to tidal flooding to give some context to that about about 25 hectares or or five percent i suppose of fishermen's bend at the moment is is below the uh, the one percent aep tidal flood level but if we look forward um to, to 2100 and look um, at the effects of climate change on on tidal flood levels There'll be about 166 hectares or, or roughly a third of Fisherman's Bend that will be below um, that 1% AEP tide flood level in 2100. Big picture to begin with, what did you determine was a possible approach? The, the purpose of the Water Sensitive Drainage and Flood Strategy um, was really to explore the potential to use distributed flood storages in, in the streetscapes and open spaces as, as an alternative to the uh, the baseline drainage infrastructure, which is typically um, pipelines and, and pump stations. If we sort of look at really what uh, you know um, the the aims of um, Fisherman's Bend um, are, um, you know this this is really what we're trying to tr- trying to achieve ultimately for Fisherman's Bend. It's it's to create a um, a thriving place uh, that is a leading example for environmental sustainability, um, livability, connectivity, diversity, and innovation. And so, you know, the, the whole um, process of developing this um, flood management strategy was sort of thinking about that bigger picture and coming up with a strategy that actually actually works for, um, I guess, the aims of, of Fisherman's Bend. This led to, you know, trying to... Uh, um, integrate the, uh, the drainage strategy within the urban design um, and creating a place, um, not just uh, providing flood protection, but creating a place for, let's say, for people to, um, uh, to enjoy, a place where people actually want to be. You've come up with what you've called a hybrid approach. Let's start working through some of the detail of what has been proposed by the strategy. Can you start by outlining uh, the levy element that was identified? I guess starting, starting with the baseline drainage plan, we, we had the um, um, uh, pipe upgrades, um, pump stations, um, a levy uh, for the baseline. And then when we sort of looked to um, come up with a, a water sensitive um, flood management strategy, we then looked at uh, um, incorporating um, flood storages into the, um, the actual yeah, the actual solution. As part of that, we still needed the levees to protect from coastal flooding, sea level rise, etc. We then you know, still still needed some uh, pipe drainage upgrades. We then had um, the flood storages in there, uh, which were really there to avoid the um, pipe drainage upgrades. Yeah, we still needed pump stations to get water um, out of Fisherman's Bend. And we've got um, 
that rain water tanks in there, etc. Um, so, so that was how the the border strategy sort of um, developed and, and and what it included. The the levies, I guess, coming back to um, place making it and trying to create somewhere that um, people want to be, it'd be very easy to to put in a levy um, that was just um, a concrete wall and it provided you know the function of stopping tide seats that will rise from um, encroaching into fishermen's bend but it would it wouldn't be a very um, um, attractive place to be and uh, you know looking at the aims of fishermen's bend it you know it wouldn't be a great place to, to live if you had this concrete wall around it so you know the, the it was it really important when considering the levy that you know considering how it fits into its surrounds into the context into the overall aims of Fisherman's Bend so the levy there is it's the stop water coming into Fisherman's Bend from Port, Port Phillip Bay etc and it it can take the f- many forms it can just be landscaping where we just you know set the level up a little bit higher you know grass banks it can be integrated into the built environment um, so part of actual buildings part of structures um, it can be perhaps just a, a promenade. Um, uh, m- maybe it can be a sort of a, a wall of some description. But there are, there are many ways in which to integrate this into the, the built environment, and it's and it's really important that um, we think beyond just its 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 core function, which is to stop water coming in. It's also about making it fit within um, the, the the context of Fishman's Bend and, and what we're trying to achieve there, which is a uh, um, a great place for people to be. I'm fascinated by the what you call the multifunctional green infrastructure that's been incorporated into the proposed design. Can you give us an idea of what that means and, and describe what it would look like? One of, I mean, one of the aims um, of the stakeholders was um, to to make water a feature of um, Fisherman's Bend, and and the stakeholders wanted this to be. You know, part of the character of Fishman's Bend. So we didn't want to hide the water; we wanted to make it visible. So these storages that we created, it, um, the, the main purpose hydraulically was to avoid the need for um, pipe upgrades. So uh, Fishman's Bend, it's 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 already it already has a pipe drainage network there. It's already an existing um, developed area, and we're, and we're redeveloping it. So with that redevelopment. We're going to lift the standards of flood protection, which would mean that potentially some of the pipes would need to be upgraded to achieve that. And rather than upgrade the pipes, um, we looked at putting these these storages into the streetscape environments to avoid the need for those pipe upgrades. So if the pipes reach their capacity, the idea is that the water would then um, flow um, back into the storages or be held in these storages in the streetscape until capacity was available in the actual pipe drainage network and, and, and these and these storages um you know what do they look like what, what, what are they um and there's lots of discussion around this and it's all part of the urban design um but I mean, generally speaking um uh, within the streetscape environment quite a large part of these storages will be formed by say um, linear parks that run down the um down down the street so we've got our our pavements, the roads, the, the cycle paths, and then then we've got these these green strips, um, which which can be depressed. So so, so these storages are on the surface; um, they're not underground. And it's, it's really whether these parts where these green linear parts can be um, lowered um, to create an area water can um, preferentially collect, I suppose, within the streetscape environment. So linear linear parks. That's that's one part. And then also we've got uh, tree pits as well, um, where there can be storage um, within those spaces, um, and it's uh, yeah. And so all all these things are then connected into the drainage system to you know say allow the water to flow away once there's there's capacity there. But it's it's again it's, it's creating that connection um, between the water on the surface, the people, social resilience. Um, it's all part of the character of Fisherman's Bend. The linear parks, can you describe them in a little bit more detail? In, t- in terms of their depth, I suppose, I, I mean, um, we we're looking at perhaps half a metre um, deep. Um, we, 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 we've got to be very careful here with um, uh, safety as well, um, you know, the, the public safety. Um, we can't create 
deep depressions, which then um, create hazards for people that you know, might you know, might fall or or sort of um, trip into them. Um, so they're, they're they're battered down as well. So that there's a gradual fall into them. There, there needs to be a lot of thought, and there is a lot of flexibility with this as well in terms of how they're integrated within the the street design. You know, the width of them, you know, can, can vary quite a lot depending on how much space is ultimately with, within the, the streetscape. But you know, they could, they could be five meters, ten meters, um, maybe only a few meters. Um, but uh, you know, the, so there's, there's there's a lot of flexibility there. You know, they can be, they can be sort of also curved in shape as well. They don't have to be straight and boring. You know, they they can sort of um, have other form. Because um, at the end of the day, from a hydraulic point of view, it's just about creating some volume there, some storage. What did the research show about how often these flooding events uh, occur in Fisherman's yeah. Bend? That's a really good question. And, and, it's, and it's something that um, when, when, we're, when we're presenting flood maps, we, we tend to forget about as well. I mean, we're talking about a lot of you know, fairly extreme events here um, and, and when these sort of areas will, will flood. It only occurs, you know, for relatively um, small periods of time, and then the rest of the time, these these places are, are dry and uh, um, and usable for for other things. The, the standards of flood protection that we were looking at for Fisherman's Bend, um, we're looking to keep the roads um, flood free in a twenty year event. The existing pipe drainage system. Had um, capacity that was, was quite was, was fairly variable across Fisherman's Bend, but gen- generally speaking, you know, a, a five-year standard in, in, in a lot of places, maybe a bit more um, in, in, in some. Um, so you could say, you know, well, once the drainage capacity is you know, reached in, in the five-year event, that's when water will then start to back up and inundate these um, these street storages. So. You, know, you could say on average once every five years a lot of these places would start to flood yeah you know, they're not going to be full of water you know all the while they're you know they're, they're not really going to be fully inundated um you know that often so there's you know there's a lot of opportunity to use these spaces for um for other things what did you find in terms of the cost of this hybrid approach versus just a traditional excavation and, and um, pipe drainage system. We don't want to be in a situation where we're putting these storage in and find that they're actually going to cost more than the pipe upgrade in the first place. And that, that was a complex um, discussion to be had. Um, gen- generally, we found that the um, putting the storages in was, it was a cheaper option than uh, um, the pipe upgrades. That was mainly around um, you know, the fact that the, the vision for Fisherman's Bend was to have this this, this green um, uh, approach, and so this, the linear parks were already there because that was part of the vision. We, we split fishermen put up into twelve catchments, um, and in in two of them, we they, they were particularly low lying, and we basically just stayed with the the pipe upgrades, and we didn't have storages. Um, and then in six of the sub catchments, we did have these um, storages, um, and then there was four catchments left over where the existing pipe drainage system was actually sufficient and um, there wasn't a need to um, up- upgrade the, the capacity of that. The drainage and flood strategy that you worked on was for the Fishman's Bend Water Sensitive City Working Group. Can you tell me who was a part of the working group? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's quite an exciting working group really um, uh, with lots of skills from different backgrounds. So, um, uh, We've got, we've got Melbourne Water in there um, as the uh, sort of the regional drainage authority. Um, we've got uh, uh, the Fisherman's Bend Task Force themselves. And then we've got the, the, the two councils that uh, Fisherman's Bend um, sits within. So that's the city of Melbourne and the city of Port Phillip. Um, and then we've got, uh, got South East Water um, in there. And then also we've got the uh, um, CRC for water sensitive cities. Um, as part of that group, um, as well as GHD uh, ourselves. I've been speaking with Philip Joyce. Philip is a technical director at GHD and leader of their waterways and stormwater team in Victoria. Thanks, Philip. Thanks very much.